The Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game, public enemies that even the G-men cannot reach. The Green Hornet. Adventure, Pink Lemonade, and Tan Bark. The events and characters depicted in this drama are fictitious. Any similarity to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. Oh, gosh, Mr. Reed, I thought you'd never get here. Yeah, what's the matter, Miss Benny? Having trouble in the absence of Miss Case? Oh, no, I can handle her work all right, as long as you don't spend too much time in the office. But there's a letter here. Oh, what's remarkable about that? We get letters every day. But this is the rarest envelope I've ever seen. It's addressed to Mr. Britt Reed, Esquire. Esquire? It's from way out west and has a note written in one corner on the back of the envelope. A note? If not delivered in five days, send to the cops' headquarters to be held there until I call for it. Well, what? <laughs> now, who might I be? God, give me that. There's only one man who'd write that way. Who? Yeah, let's see it. It is. It's from Mike Axford. Mike Axford? You mean... I mean the original man of action, the brother of Tim who just left here recently. Oh, gosh. Casey's told me plenty about him. And he's coming back here. He is. Boy, I'd like to see Casey's face when she hears those titles. Yeah, listen to this letter. Dear Reed, I sort of got fed up with batting around out west here, and I figured I'd go back east to where you are. Now, I don't know if the Green Hornet is still running at large, Reed, but if he is, I'm renewing me old pledge to run the Spalpeet Earth. That's one reason for me coming back. The other reason is that having been a reporter... Reporter? <laughs> I got it in me blood like an old fire horse. Timothy tells me that you're well, and so is Cato. If it's all right with you to take me back, I'll be there soon. Signed, Michael Axford. P.S. I won't wait to hear from you. When you get to read this, I'll be on the train. Gosh. Good old Axford. You like him a lot, don't you, Mr. No, I certainly do. You know, I resented him at first. You see, Dad hired him to serve as a bodyguard for me, but he wasn't supposed to let me know that. He was supposed to work in this office as an advisor to the crime reporters. Oh? But I found out his real purpose and then took him into my apartment to live there with me. So he could keep a closer watch on you? Yeah, so I'd know when he was sleeping and not watching. <laughs> not <bad. laughs> I'd certainly be glad to see him. It's too bad he'll be late for the circus. Circus? Yeah. Or haven't you read all the publicity about it? Hey, I haven't seen a circus for years. I never miss him. There's always a chance to get some good action photographs at a circus. Axford's heart will be broken when he learns he missed... You know, he has three weaknesses. Parades, fire runs, and circuses. <laughs> so I've heard. Gee, if this circus hadn't taken off that jinx, I might get a prize-winning shot of tragedy. Jinx? What jinx is that, Miss Benny? Oh, golly. When they first started out this season, they had all kinds of trouble. There was hardly a performance without a major accident of some sort. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Why, for a time, there was talk about going back into winter quarters to recheck all the equipment. But you say this jinx has been shaken off. I guess so. They haven't had any trouble for some time now. I understand that circus people are a superstitious lot. And how? Why, they're even worse than vaudeville people. <laughs> I wonder if we couldn't get a story out of that. A story? Yeah, for the Sunday supplement. Something about the superstitions of the sawdust ring, uh, shaking the jinx from the turnpike. Gee, there's a whiz-bang of an idea, Mr. Reed. Look, give me a chance at it, will you? Right, well, Miss Benny, suppose you go to it and see what you can do. Uh, who's going to get the collaboration on it? Who? Oh, Ed Lowry, of course. Ed Lowry? Uh, have you two called a truce? Oh, no. 
I still think he's a lug and he thinks things about me. But the son of a gun can <laughs> write. <laughs> Very well, Miss Benny. Suppose you go to it. Just watch what we turn out. I'll get hold of the advance man on the phone right away and make a day to go over it with him. Yes? There's a Mr. Lowry from the Daily Sentinel to see you, Mr. Burns. He has an appointment. I'll see him in a little while. Please tell him to wait. Yes, Mr. Burns. What'd the girl say? Lowry of the Sentinel. Yes, Sanders, a reporter. What time is a 24-hour man for reporters? Now, you'd better tell him you can't see him today, Burns. The Sentinel is giving us a feature story, and they but want to Burns, hear... I said you better not see him. I don't care about any arguments on the subject, see? The less your show has to do with reporters, the better we like it. Now, hold on a minute, Penders. We've got to take orders from you up to a certain point, but publicity is money in the circus business. Now, we need money badly this year. Sure, sure you do. Only you ain't handling the publicity angle. I know what the Sentinel is figuring to do. They want to run a story about the... the jinx you shook up. Well, what are we? Things might come out. Larry's pretty smart, see? He might get the idea that the jinx was something that could be licked by taking out the form of insurance my outfit handles. Now, you'd better send word out to the secretary that you can't see him. How did you know about what Lowry came for? Burns, you don't think we're missing any bets, do you? The girl has to report everything to us. Is she one of your racketeering outfits? I don't like that line of talk, Burns. You better cut it, see? Now, send word you can't talk to Lowry. Then we'll go over the books and get a line on what you pay for insurance in this town. You confounded crook. You should know by this time that every crack of that sort costs your outfit dough. I wish Anderson would tell you and your whole gang where to go. Oh, he wouldn't do that. Just think of all the things that can happen to a circus if they don't take the proper precautions. Now, phone the girl, or do you want me to? I'll tell her. Hello? I won't be able to see you, Mr. Lowry. Oh, you won't? No. Very well, Mr. Burns. I'll tell him. Mr. Burns won't be able to see you today, Mr. Lowry. Hey, now, wait a minute, sister. I've had this appointment too long for him to stall me off. I got a story waiting for what he's to tell me. I'm sorry. Mr. Burns can't see you. But that doesn't make sense. Didn't you tell him I'm from the Sentinel? Yes, sir. Doesn't he want publicity for the circus? Why, any other time, a guy like Burns would be tearing my office door off to get a write-up. He said he You can't... told me what he said. Am I too late, Lowry? I got held up with Mr. Burns' dictation. Burns won't see us. What do you mean he won't? What did I tell you, Benny? But he's got to. We need more quotes from officials. We can't put the publicity man down for every quote we use in that story. If we wait for the show itself to get to town to land some of the other officials, it'll be too late for our story. You heard what I said. Where's his door? I'm sorry, ma'am. Mr. Burns says Listen, he can't... Listen, sister. They say that fools walk in where angels fear to tread. Okay, Toots, here's a fool. You can't... Look here, Burns. I knew you when. You can't put the high hat on when Clicker Benny is. Holy mackerel. What's this interruption mean? Get rid of her, Burns. I must insist Fenders. that you leave you. For the love of Pete. Fenders. Well, how long have you been out of jail? Why, you confounded... Look here, Lowry. Can't you give a man the chance to go straight? You? <laughs> well, that's a laugh. What racket are you in now? I'm trying to make a living, that's all. I'm handling insurance. Insurance? Yes, insurance. I paid up for the mistake I made. Now I'm just trying to get by. Mr. Burns will tell you that. I'll bet it's the highest priced insurance Burns ever paid for. How about it, Burns? Mr. Penders has told you the truth. I know all about his past record and find him a fine gentleman in spite of it. Now, I told you, Mr. Lowry, that I couldn't talk to you. Now, will you please leave my office, or shall I call the police and have you thrown out? Well, I'll be a so-and-so. Come on, Clicker. We can take a hint. Now, I hope you're satisfied. Look here, babe. When did Mr. Fender start peddling insurance to Burns? I don't know. Okay, okay, but I'll bet I could guess. Come along, Clicker. This is something the boss should hear about. Yeah, you're just the guy to tell him. And on top of everything else he did, Mr. Reed, this guy Fenders ran a vegetable racket on the lower market. He did his stretch and got off mighty easy by copying a plea of guilty. And now he's going straight and selling insurance. Insurance nothing, boss. It's a protection racket. We checked back and found that he started in with Burns just about the time the jinx was shaken off the circus. And that means Fenders and his gang caused all those accidents. Don't you see? Well, I'm not blind, Miss Benny. Oh, I beg your pardon, Mr. Reed. What I mean is... Burns is scared to death of Fenders. You think, then, that the circus is playing Fenders and his gang so they can go on with their big shows without having accidents? Accidents is a good word for it. I'd call it murder. The sort of accidents they used to have don't happen so often. Ropes breaking, animals getting loose, food being contaminated, stands breaking down, tents collapsing. Can't we make a story of it? If we could expose that racket and slap Fenders and his gang back in jail where well, they should have been put for keeps the first time, 
Well, think of the scoop it would be. Let's suppose there is such a racket as you two think. I'd stake a month's pay well, on suppose it. Suppose there is. Suppose we make a play to expose it. Now, what would that mean? We'd only make the racketeers mad, and they might take it out on the circus people. If there's anything of that sort, the law can't do anything without a complaint. Fenders knows that. Sure he does. Burns doesn't complain because he doesn't dare to. If there's a complaint or investigation from another source, the circus folks would pay for it. No one knows how many people might be killed or injured in the tragedy that would follow. Can Fenders get away with that ruthless sort of stuff? Miss Binney, we aren't in the racket-smashing business. We're publishing a newspaper. Sure, now, look, but... boss. Lowry, the Sentinel's policy is to publish the news, not make it. Oh, now, let's get back to reporting, Lowry. And as for you, Miss Binney, I have some letters for you to get out. <laughs> After dinner in his apartment that evening, Britt Reed discussed what Larry had told him with Cato. Cato, the young millionaire's faithful valet, was the only living person to know him as the Green Hornet. The trouble, Cato, is that I'm dead sure Larry's right in his suspicion. But uh, what can you do about it, Mr. Well, without a complaint, the police can't make a move. Who will complain? The circus people are the only ones who can complain, and they certainly won't dare. No, sir. If, if Cato, I dared take the chance. What chance? I wonder. Well, let me see. I'd first have to satisfy myself that Fenders was being paid for protection. Then we'd have to learn the names of the other men in Fenders' gang. I could get that from some of the old copies of the Sentinel I brought home with me. Is that what the bundle is? Yes, I, I brought a few back issues from the time when Fenders and his gang were on trial. I have their names. They're probably still working with him. He hasn't been out long enough to line up new men whom he can trust. And then what would you do? One moment. I have the number of Fenders' hotel room. Perhaps I can catch him there now. Why you phone him? Check a couple of points. I'll have to acquire a horse voice and trust to luck that the rest of the gang haven't come to town yet. Get up. Hello, Fenders. Are they paid up or do you need some rough house here in town? Who's this? Gimp, of course. Don't sound like it. Yeah, I got a bad throat, that's all. I'll be okay. Yeah, I see. Did Burns come through with a payment okay? What about the other guys? Uh, you mean Blinker? Yeah, and Dolan. Yeah, they're with me. Okay. Everything is set. No rough house here. I'll see you tomorrow night and pay up. Tomorrow night? Why not now? I told you tomorrow night. If you come in a day early, that's your tough luck. Now, don't come near me, see? Okay. Tomorrow night it is, then. Meet you near the lemonade stand at the grounds, just before the show starts. Right. So long. Bye. Hey, Dolan. Fenders told me plenty. He did? I used the name Gimp. Gimp used to be his muscle man. Dolan and Blinker were two others that handled his rough stuff for him. Yes? They're due in town tomorrow. They're to meet Fenders at the lemonade stand at the circus tomorrow night. He's to pay them off. Oh, what are you going to do? Do? Cato, I'm going to blow that racket sky high. You just wait and see. But how? First place, watch what happens to this apartment. Here, hand me that and iron from the fireplace. Yes, sir. Here. Now, out in the hall. This way. We'll start by smashing the lock on this door. There. Now we forced an entrance. Shut the door. You break it? Yeah, and that's not all. That desk of mine usually has cash in it. Usually lock. Good enough. We smash that. That's it. Now, Cato, take a look at these pictures. What pictures? Here, this old copy of the Sentinel. This man is Fenders. Well, forget his face. Study the other three. Gimp, Dolan, and Blinker. You're going to describe those men to the police when they come here to investigate a burglary. You came in, found me knocked out on the floor. Those three men ran out of the place. The police get the description from you. I'm unconscious on the floor. But, Mr. Don't Bitt. let the cops see those old papers, though. Describe the men from memory. You got that? Yes, but you... I get knocked out cold. Now, take this and hit me. I can, Miss Britt. Well, find you, Cato. Go ahead, hit me. Knock me out and then telephone for the police. You've got to do it. But I don't... You do I... what you're told. Yes, sir. <clears throat> oh. oh, Mr. Britt. I'm so sorry. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Green Hornet adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. At Britt Reed's orders, Cato, the faithful valet, knocked the young publisher unconscious. Then he called the police. They hurried to the modern apartment, accompanied by Lowry of the Daily Sentinel. This trouble in the boss's own apartment, the thing might be big time. That is my salary. There's his door. This way. Oh, hello, Cato. Mr. Rory. That's Reed's valet. You know him, Doyle. Sure I do. What's happened? This way. Hurry. It's Mr. Britt. He's hurt. Hey, boss. Good night. What's happened, Mr. Reed? Uh, what, what hit me? Who busted in here? Look how that desk is ripped open. I saw them. Yeah? What they look like? Give us a description. Three men. Three of them, eh? I had a good look before they learned. Hey, go into the other room. I got to do something for the boss. Take it easy. Uh, here, Mr. Reed. Now take a drink of this. Ah. Oh, my head. Uh, you had a hard sock. There's a lump as big as an egg there. B- burglars, police. Yeah, the cops are here, all right. Cato saw the crooks, and he's describing them the door right now. Uh, good for Cato. I know that, love. What does Doyle say? He knows who crowned you. I'm all right now, Lowry. I, I want to speak to Doyle. Hey, Marty. If that isn't Blinker that Cato describes, I'll eat my shirt. Skip back to headquarters and bring us the gallery shots of Blinker and the rest of his outfit. Blinker? Hey, I remember him. He used to work the rackets with fenders. With fenders, get that? The burn I told you about. Oh, yes. Doyle, the Sentinel played a big part in sending those rats down. This is reprisal, that's what it is. Get those pictures, Mark. I'm on the way, Doyle. Be right back with us. We'll see if Cato can identify them. Cato did identify three men whose pictures he was shown. The order went out to pick up Blinker, Gimp, and Dolan. Through Britt Reed's influence, the entire matter was kept from the other papers in the city. And, of course, no word of it appeared in the Daily Sentinel. The following morning, Fender's three partners took a cab from the train. Uh, here's the hotel. Okay. Pile out, Gimp. Yeah, I am. Well, look who's here. Huh? Take it easy, boys. The sergeant wants to have a little talk with you three. He must be. You ain't got nothing on us. We only just now got into town. Pay off your driver. We got a car waiting to take you in. Had an idea you might show up at your old favorite hotel. What's a big idea? We're in the clear now. Sure, sure. Maybe you can give an alibi for last night. We wasn't in town at all. We got an alibi. We was 200 miles from here. Save it for the sergeant. I thought there'd be a frame like this sooner or later. Nice suspicion to two. What's the charge? Burglary. Burglary? We ain't burgled any place. We never burgled in our life. Also assault and battery. I want my lawyer. We got a right to a mouthpiece. You can't hold us. We'll talk that over later. Come on now. Get going. Lowry heard of the arrest. He brought the news to Britt Reed. It's too bad Cato's out this afternoon. They won't be able to locate him to make an identification until this evening. Good. I'm glad to see those guys stew in jail for a while. How long can they be held there? 24 hours at least. Cops are trying to locate Cato. Of course, Cato may have made a mistake when he identified the pictures of them. I doubt it. Does Fenders know his former pals are in jail? Not as far as I know. No way he would know, is there? Yeah, I suppose not. It's odd, Lowry. They're just about the time you suspect Fenders of trying to run a racket in the circus his three henchmen would show up in town. They claim they just got into town 15 minutes before they were picked up. Yeah, that being the case, they'd arrive the day of the circus. I wonder if that would be coincidence. Not by a long shot. They're the muscle men, I tell you, boss. If the circus don't pay up, they're the guys that go to work on it, wreck things. They're the jinx. That's yeah, pretty far-fetched, Lowry. But it isn't. You haven't any proof, you know. Oh, I know. I'm getting so I hate that word, proof. Hey, I wonder. Hmm? The thought just came to me, Lowry. If we could get something more tangible, some evidence that they came to town to meet Fender. How could we? I understand you've got a date to take Miss Benny to the circus tonight. Yeah, I got hooked. Will she be taking her camera along with her? Sure she will. She's never without it. I'm the guy who plays second fiddle to a camera. How do you like that? Suppose I tell Cato not to identify those men, even if they are the ones he saw. And let them get away with the beating they gave you? Not for a good reason. The police would let them go if Cato didn't make the identification, wouldn't they? Sure, they wouldn't have anything to hold them on. Very well, that being the case, if your theories are correct, they would at once go to hunt for Fenders. Isn't that logical? Sure it is. Especially if they think they might be needed tonight. Now then, where will Fenders be tonight? Probably at the circus. Uh-huh. Then if you and Miss Benny stay close to Fenders, she might be able to get a shot of that trio contacting him. But finding Fenders at the circus would be like a needle in a haystack. Fenders will probably stay near Burns after the show gets underway. Boss, you should be a reporter instead of me. You've got a way of doping things out. Now, what do you think of the idea? But what if we do get pictures of Fenders with those lugs? Go on from there and see if we can get more proof that there's an alliance and that there is a racket. The show leaves town tomorrow. Then, Lowry, it's up to you to get all you can tonight. You might overhear things, you know. Boss, we'll have our eyes and ears open and Clicker's camera ready. Brett Reed had to time things carefully that evening. He gave Cato very specific instructions, which were carried out to the letter. The three racketeers were released on schedule and headed for the circus lock, glad that they could keep their appointment. (laughs) 
While the circus lot was a blaze of lights. It was just before the time for the opening, and crowds jammed the side show, the menagerie, and the various refreshment stands. At one corner of the big lot, pink lemonade with thin slices of fruit floating on top filled huge jars on a narrow counter. The unshaded lights revealed fenders near the stand, not far from the curb. A low, heavy machine came to a halt. As Britt Reed took the biggest risk in the entire proceeding. Fenders, come here. She called to the racketeer. I want to speak to you. He was careful to keep well back in the low slung car so the cook couldn't see the sinister mask that concealed his face. Fenders sauntered to the machine. Well, I have a message for you. Here, take it. Fenders came closer and placed one foot on the running board, and then... What the... Make a move or shout, I'll let you have it, Fenders. You're covered. A hornet. Open a door and get into this car. Keep your mouth shut and you'll not get hurt. But what... what... Hurry, do what you're told. You don't want to hang around here till someone gets a good look at this machine. In with you. What do you want? Shut that door. Now, sit tight. I'm driving around the block. You can get out of here when we pass the corner again, Fenders. If you just leave the dough on the seat beside you. I don't know what you're talking about. The cut for the boys. Dolan, Gimp, Blinky, you know what dough I mean. Shell out. But who? Quick! Let's you have the gas and take it from you. Did the boys send you? What do you think? Where are they now? None of your business. Is that much time left for you, Fenders? I'm either letting you out of the next corner or giving you the gas. No, no, don't shoot. I'm putting the money on the seat. That's more like it. Yeah. Tell me what the big idea is. You'd better ask Burns. Burns? He won't want to talk, but I guess you've ways of making him. Did he send you here to get this? I'm not saying a word. You talk to Burns. Now get out. Yeah, yeah, sure. And thanks, Fenders. Well, that's that. The only way to get the meat to the top of the stew is to stir things up. Well, now for more story. I sure go for circuses. Yeah, but a pile of it we have see standing down here. Are you sure those were the boss's orders? You know what he told me. He closed the burn and see what we can see and hear what we can hear. Oh, Matt. There isn't enough light here to get a good picture. Not even with a 1-9 lens. Burns and Fenders have been talking a lot, but I haven't seen anything of those other three birds yet. Neither have I. Let's shove over close to them. Maybe we can get a load of what they're saying. Suits me. But don't let them get a load of us, or we'll be shoved into the seats our tickets call for. Neither that or outside. But get this, Lowry. Comes the acrobats, and I'm watching the show no matter what goes on. Soft pedal. Walk backwards. I tell you, I don't know a thing about it, Fenders. If you think I had any contact with the Green Hornet, you're crazy. Now, look, Burns, I'm not fooling when I say you talk up or else. It ain't too late to cause a pile of trouble around here. I can't stand here talking to you now. No, this ain't I... a hot place to talk. You'll go to the little tent you use for an office. Come on. But I You've want... got nothing to do with the running of the show from now on. Just step along or else. Get that, Benny? Meaning we go along? And how? You heard him mention the Hornet. An acrobat's coming up. Oh, darn. and get off the lot. You've been paid in full. Save it till you're in your tent. Right over here. Yeah, I know. I... What? Oh, what are you three doing here? Hello, Fenders. Gimp. It's us, all right. Dolan. Blink. How? Uh, what? He was the... told to come to Mr. Burns' tent and wait till you come in. Who told you that? The guy at the lemonade stand had a note for us. 
How about it, Fenders? Where's the dough? That's what I'd like to know. What do you mean? The Green Hornet took it. What are you handing us? Come across, Fenders. We want the cash we got coming. What are these hoodlums talking about, Fenders? None of your business. This is a personal matter. Well, I... Uh... And what do you know about the Green Hornet? Uh, we've already thrashed that out. I don't know a thing. What sort of a stunt are you pulling on us? First, we're framed for a robbery and stuck in jail. Then we're out and find we don't get paid off. We get our dough or else. Listen, Burns, get this straight. It's from us three to you. Fenders ain't nothing but the front man. We're the guys that can give you the real protection. You pay us direct, see? You're the ones who do the the damage if we don't pay up? Now nah, you got it straight. We don't need Fenders no more. Stop see? talking yourself in a jail, you confounded fool. Keep out of this, Fenders. Nah, I won't. I'll keep you out there. Wait a minute. Oh. Stop this rough house. Yeah, it'll hold you. Now, Burns, your show is going on. I don't know if you paid your insurance for this performance or not. But if you did, you'll have to get a refund from Fenders when he comes to. You're paying us, see? I'm not paying out another dime. It's clear that you three represent the entire organization. Hey, wait! Hey, Rube! What the heck? That's the shout that brings the whole gang. Stand where you are. I'm on. And I'm with you, Burns. Hold it. What's the in? camera? I got you. What is it, boss? What's up, Mr. Burns? Hey, who are these guys? Take them all in, boys. They've been running an extortion racket. Oh, uh, wait a second. They're committed can... damaging our show. Now, look, let's talk it over. We were outside, Burns. We can testify for you. We've been paying for protection. Fenders didn't let me know who his gangsters were, but this was all of them. Let me out of here! I ain't staying to go back to jail. Oh, yes, you are, Gimp. Take him to jail. Lowry, I'll see you later. It's pink lemonade and tan bark for me. Cato, I have the names of some people who were injured when Fender's gang tried to wreck the show. Yes, Mr. Bett. Well, divide this cash we took from Fender's and send it to them. Very well. You take care of the details, Cato. Just send the cash to them. There's no use telling them it comes from the Green Hornet. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Green Hornet Incorporated. 